It's the 5A Division I UIL Playoffs on Texan Live, presented by Panera Bread. Whether you're watching this broadcast live or on demand, thanks so much for being a part of Texan Live. Tonight, it's Carl Absex, Cedar Park Timberwolves, taking on Kirk Martin's Manville Mavericks in a Region 3 playoff matchup from Kyle Field in College Station home on the University of Texas A&M Aggies. I'm Mark M. Johnson. As always, an absolute pleasure bringing you live coverage here on Texan Live. If you haven't already, make sure you check us out on Twitter at Texan underscore live. Instagram and Snapchat at Texan Live, all one word. You can like our Facebook page, Texan Live, and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Texan Live, as well. If you've been waiting for this matchup all week, don't worry, you're not alone in a game that many see as a state championship game. And it's only coming here in the regional semifinals, a battle of undefeated teams and a defending state champion square off today at Kyle Field. Cedar Park Timberwolves won uh, the Division I 5A state championship last season with a victory over Lone Star at NRG Stadium in the state finals, completing their perfect season. Well, now many people believe it's Manville's time now that they have dropped down from 6A to 5A. It always seemed like the team that was standing in Manville's way was the Katy Tigers. Well, they don't have to worry about playing the Katy Tigers anymore. And then they have absolutely dominated 5A, even defeating two powerhouse 6A schools in non-district play. And one of them, the North Shore Mustangs, the defending 6A Division I state champions. And then, of course, shutting out Pearlands, uh, scoring 30-plus points in that game. One of their former district rivals. Always a good matchup between them. Sure, they like to keep that rivalry going. But it's another test for Manful. They've made it two weeks in, beating the New Caney Eagles last week very handily. Cedar Park coming into this game. I mean, it's just a monstrous matchup, as, as you all know, is why you're tuned in right now. Manville will be receiving, starting off there in their red tops and the red bottoms, their white helmets. And kicking from your right to your left, Cedar Park. And their white uniforms making the travel here from Leander ISD. Manville, of course, out of the Alvin ISD School District. Both of these teams winning their districts respectively. Cedar Park won 19-5A and already a pooch kick. A bear catch is going to be called on the near side uh, around the 37-yard line. That's where Manville will start off. As I was just mentioning before, Manville winning their district over the Fort Bend ISD schools 23-5A. As we're about to get started here, the Manville Mavericks will send, of course, Kaysen Martin, Jr. Uh, quarterback, his running back is going to be Sam Smith, Sr. Eric Bennett and Jalen Preston are the wide receivers. And the slot positions is Keelan Stokes and Caleb Blanton. The other running back uh, listed here in the starting lineup is going to be Caleb Jolivet. As we're about to get underway again here at Kyle Field, Texas A&M. Sight for these guys. He's already taking the snap here and the handoff. And trying to go over to the right side. Breaks the tackle, gets to the outside. Finally forced out of bounds. Nice run to start off from Joel Levette. side this time, trying to break free, manages to get to the midfield. Feeling Stokes on the carry there from the wide receiver position. Also bring up third down now. Not too far to go for him in a fumble, it appeared. Just in the nick of time with Sam Smith. So, unable to pick up the first down. Not only that, they're going to lose yardage here. As it backs him up to about the 45-yard line. So, they're going to be forced to punt this football away here. Of 
from about the 35-yard line, kicking this one away. And just a fair catch called. Valk with the fair catch. So Manville, nothing doing, a three and outs. And their first possession, something you don't see too often from these Mavericks. Uh, Cedar Park will now head out on offense for the first time. Of course, been led by Sexton. 158, 256 on the season. Over 2,200 yards in the air, 18 touchdowns, six interceptions. He's got one in the backfield with him. And he's going to hand the football off right away here. And nothing doing there. Tyler Levine on the carry for Cedar Park. Not even a minute and a half gone by in this game. Anvil had to punt the football away in their first possession. So this is the first time we're seeing a Cedar Park's offense against Manville's defense. Free safety, Derek Tucker, noted guy on uh, the defense. He's going to be playing his football here next year at Texas A&M. Just a flat to the near side. That's going to be caught and forced out of bounds. Not too much on that. Carson Neal on the reception. Had four touchdown receptions on the season and over 300 yards in the air. Ty trips right sets. He's gonna throw this one off the middle. That's up in the air. That's gonna be picked off. Down to the 20 yard line. Still on his feet, trying to break some more tackles and get forward. The interception from Manville. There's your first turnover of the game as there's that defense for the Manville Mavericks. Brian Johnson, the man to come away with the interception. And just like that, 10-17 still to go here in the first quarter. Manville's going to have their second offensive possession of this football game. Three and out their last time doing mainly because of a fumble. Looking to throw the football up the middle. That one is going to be caught in the man who had the carry earlier in the game. Caitlin Stokes. A gain of eight will make it second down and two. Now two minutes gone by. Ball on the nine-yard line. To the left side on the carry. Still on his feet. Breaking couple of tackles. Flags go up at the end of this play as he will get down to the two-yard line. Again, that was Keelan on the carry. Keelan Stokes already very active in this ball game for the Manville Mavericks. A face mask penalty is going to go against Cedar Park. So that's going to be an automatic first down. They only needed two yards. They would have had the first down anyway, but a first down in goal. A huge opportunity here for Manville to put the first score up of the ball game against these defending state champions, Cedar Park Timberwolves. Here's a handoff. Diving forward, did he get into the end zone? No indication just yet. Now they're gonna say he's down right at the goal line. Well, it's an Eric Prince with the carry, so second and goal. Ball right around the goal line at the one yard line. It's gonna be Prince again, as he's gonna be tripped up. Is he in the end zone? There he is! Manville Mavericks will score first here in the regional semifinal matchup between undefeated teams. His one yard touchdown run makes it a six to nothing game. So the turnover, Manville takes advantage of it, and Cedar Park may be looking at that one later in the game as yeah, something very, very hurtful. Point up after is good, and that'll make your score 7 to nothing. with 9-16 remaining here in the first quarter. We'll take a short break, but we'll be right back. You're watching the UIL playoffs on Texan Live, presented by Panera Bread. 
The Black Friday savings start now at Big Star Ford. With extra bonus cash and huge savings, this is our biggest sale of the year. Right now, get a new Ford Edge for only $306 a month. Or if you're looking for something a little bigger, drive a new Explorer for only $415 a month. If you've been waiting to buy, now is the time to save thousands at Big Star Ford's Black Friday event. Come see us on Highway 288, just minutes from Beltway 8, or shop BigStarFord.com. You drive, we listen. Se habla espanol. A one-yard touchdown run from Daenerik Prince after the interception by Brian Johnson and has made this a seven to nothing game. Anvil taking advantage of that turnover. So they'll kick the football away now, going from your left to your right. So here we go, 9.16 to go in the first quarter. A little pooch kick to the left side is actually going to roll out of bounds at 18. So they have the option here of taking the penalty or forcing Manville to re-kick this one five yards back. Considering where it went out of bounds, they may just go ahead and accept the penalty and take it where it stands. It was a pass up the middle from Sexton that was disrupted. And those ones always a killer when they pop up in the air. Anything can happen there. And usually it goes the bad way. And that's certainly what happened for the Timberwolves as Mavericks were able to intercept it and eventually score. So their second drive of the football game. Sexton with two in the backfield with him. He's going to hand the football off, find you a nice hole, but that closes very quickly. As he manages to get up to the 31 yard line. I believe his extra effort took him to the 32, so a gain of two will make it second down and eight. Ball on the 32 yard line on the near hash mark. A little miscommunication from Cedar Park. They had two in motion for just a moment there. Now they have one. And the throw is going to go. And what a diving attempt. And he ends up making the catch across midfield into Manville territory. Fantastic grab from Peyton Swicky. Two touchdown receptions on the season. He also had a 300 yards through the air, but a penalty is going to halt that fantastic catch. Would have been a first down in a Manville territory. So the penalty is going to push him back to the 27 yard line. So it's going to be second down and 13 from there for the Timberwolves. Three wide receivers set. Here's the handoff. Nice hole. And that pops loose again. That's going to be picked up by Manville. Running with it. Across the 30 yard line, taken down there. Derek Tucker now comes away with the football. Two turnovers by Cedar Park on their own end could be disastrous for them. 7.59 to go here in the first quarter. And this defense for the Manville Mavericks has come up huge. They forced two turnovers. They already have capitalized on one. Let's see what they can do on this second attempt here. The ball was placed at the 29-yard line, the near hash mark. So Manville's offense back out there for a third time. A gift given to the offense. And they give it back to their defense and put some points up on the board and make it a little more comfortable for them. Airing this one to the near side. That one's going to be caught on the sideline. They're going to say that he stepped out of bounds, though, at the 20-yard line. Eric Bennett on a catch. Martin. He's going to throw this one to the far side this time. A fake. 
And getting some extra yards after the fake and getting across the 10-yard line on second down and one. That's going to be a first and goal coming up. 7.46 to go in the first quarter. Again, making that catch with Stokes. So they go quick to the gun here. It's going to be another handoff up the middle and trying to dive forward. Did he get into the end zone? No, they're going to say he was just short. The extra efforts almost coming away there was the Manville Mavericks with another touchdown. A very worthy effort from Smith, uh, Sam Smith, excuse me. 7.20 and ticking remaining. It's going to be second and goal. Ball right at the one yard line. Up the middle, and Smith will get in this time. Manville puts another six up on the board with a one-yard touchdown in there. They take advantage of the turnover yet again. And just like that, the Mavericks have a 13 to nothing lead. Just awaiting on the point after. Here it is. It is up and it is good. So a 7-13 remaining in the first quarter. Manville scores again and they got a 14-0 lead over Cedar Park. We'll take a quick break and be right back. You're watching the UIL playoffs on Texan Live presented by Panera Bread. Clean food. Words you don't often hear. Words we at Panera live by. Because clean food is food as it should be, with no artificial flavors, preservative sweeteners, and no colors from artificial sources. We think clean food tastes better, feels better, does better. 100% of our food will be clean by year's end. Every bite will be food as it should be. Seven thirteen to go in the first quarter, and yes, that score is correct. Manville with a fourteen and nothing lead over the defending state champion Cedar Park Timberwolves, and it's all because of two turnovers on their own end: one an interception and one a fumble. They took advantage of it with two one-yard touchdowns, one from Prince and one from Smith. Martinez is set to kick this one away. And that one's going to be a great one. One yard deep into the end zone, kicks it over the head of Drew McDaniel, who was waiting to return it. And that's just going to go back out of the end zone. And they'll bring it back to the 25 yard line. A Cedar Park. They haven't really been able to get anything going offensively. This is going to be a third drive of the game, and it's kind of tough when they turn the football over. Manville has just been all over them in every, in every shape. Just looking down, they're guarding tightly. They're playing aggressively, and they're definitely showing that they want this game very badly. Hand off up the middle, not much on that a yard, if anything. Actually, they're going to go ahead and give him two yards. It'll be second down and eight. Ball on the 27-yard line now. 6.52 as the clock continues to move. Still in the first quarter. Sexton looking like he wants to throw this football on the near side. Wide open on the near side across midfield into Manville territory. Still on his feet going across the 30. And Manville finally takes him down at the 28-yard line. Nice catch and run there. Carson Neal gets Cedar Park in business. For the near hash mark at the 28 yard line of first and 10. 6.32 to go in the first quarter. Three wide receiver set. Here's the handoff. He's going over towards the weak side and a pile. Mavericks will take him down. Again, a yard, if anything, there. Extra effort at the end of the pile. May have gotten him another, who knows. To the right side now, or 
Carter trying to get to the right side, but greeted again for the stop. No gain on the play. They're going to put it'll be third down and five. Ball at the 23-yard line. Six forty-five remaining. Fullback blocking, but play action. He's going to want to throw the football. And that one's going to be caught at the 10-yard line as he came back for it. An impressive sink there from the quarterback and his receiver. The flag is up at the 30-yard line, and it's going to come back. Logan Peel made that catch. So we'll give him credit for a nice comeback there, but unfortunately his efforts will go for nothing here. So the push of football back to the 33-yard line. Third and 15 from there. 531 remaining. Still in the first quarter. This is the best field position that Cedar Park has had. They turn the football over on the first two offensive possessions. One a fumble, one an interception. And as the referee still Talking down there in the middle of the play. Finally, they get things going. Sexton alone in the backfield. Five wide receivers set. Usually you see the quarterback take off in situations like this. He's going to toss this one. The only one in the vicinity. And it looked like Drew McDaniel, the only one around. But well over his head. Maybe he was... Doing that all along, so it's going to bring up a fourth and 15 situation here. And the offense will stay out on the field. They'll try their luck. Well, now they step back out to a five wide receiver set. And again, look for the quarterback. They like to run in these situations. He's going to air this one out. That one's going to be caught inside the five yard line. They're still trying to bring him down. What a fourth and 15 play. That is why they are undefeated. Situations like that, they caught him off guard, and they used that well. What a play. Morales are on the reception, so a first and goal from the three-yard line. The run to the left side, and just like that, they're in the end zone. Cedar Park has made this a one-score game. As Alzar finds the end zone, 14-6, 5-0-4 remaining, PAT coming. Seven rushing touchdowns on the season. The extra point is up and it is going to be good. 14 7 your score, 504 remaining in the first quarter. We'll be right back here on Texan Live. You know, you see a little bit of everything here. Whether it's down a city block or along a country road, this is home. We're looking out for friends and neighbors. Well, it's a way of life. More than auto, home, life, fences, crops, and livestock. It's about moments. And moments worth covering are never accidents. So call 877 Farm Bureau. You could save up to 40% on your auto insurance. Welcome you back out to Kyle Field in College Station. Mark M. Johnson along with my production engineer, Jesse Wolf. So happy you can join us here this Saturday afternoon edition of Texas High School Football. Not only that, playoffs and a big one here. Manville currently with a 14-7 lead. Cedar Park just converted on a fourth and 15. And then the next play scored a touchdown. And they've gotten right back into this ball game. If they didn't convert there. Manville would have taken over on downs. And they would have back out on offense with a two-score lead. But a big play from the defending state champions as they are now within one score. And with 5.04 remaining in the first quarter, I'm sure they feel as they are back into this ball game. Lots of them, I'm sure, never thought that they were out. 
pretty good kick here. This will be fielded at the one-yard line going backwards. I'm sure he did the wise decision of taking this one out across the 20-yard line, spinning still on his feet across the 30-yard line, now to the 40. He's managed to break a couple of more tackles, finally taken down from behind. A mighty impressive return for the Manville Mavericks. And that was Cam Scott who returned it. Junior will be back for one more season next year. Keelan Stokes, wide receiver who we've been mentioning a couple of times. He's committed to the University of Tulsa. And so he'll head back out at his wide receiver position. Mason Martin. Waiting on this one, we'll get the football. A quick little throw. Flat route, and then the far side is going to be caught and forced out of bounds at the 46-yard line in Cedar Park territory. And that was Prince on the reception. 446 remaining. Nobody has used any timeouts here in the first half. We're still in the first quarter. Martin, again with the flat route, and again, it's Prince. To get some more yardage here. It was only second down and two after the eight yard pickup. And it looks like he's got enough for the first down. I stand corrected, he's a yard shy. Third and one. So the four wide receiver set. Flat's going to go to the opposite side and the near side. This one's going to be caught and diving forward, getting the first down. I believe he had it anyway, but he wanted to make absolutely sure that he had that first down. Stokes on the reception. Hunter Valk on the stop for Cedar Park. Here's a flag at the 30-yard line. Timberwolves territory. So it would have been a... Actually, that's going to go against Cedar Park. It would have been a first down anyway. So they add this one on to the end of the play. And now the ball's at the 24-yard line in Cedar Park territory. Mavericks offense moving very well right now. Stokes in motion. He'll pass him by, and he'll hand the football off. Martin does. Joel Yvette on the carry there for Manville. It's actually going to show that he lost a yard on that play. Second down and 11. All now back to the 25-yard line. Here's a fake handoff. This one in tight coverage up the middle, making the reception and still trying to find his way going forward. Was Cam Scott. Big pick up there, will make it first down and 10. Ball at the 13-yard line for the Mavericks. Three wide receivers set this time. Flags go up, likely going against the offense. Pushing back five yards. Martin <laughs> fumbled it anyway, so might be a good thing. So they'll push him back five yards. It'll be first down and 15. Three and a half to go in the first quarter. Play clock now at 22. Plenty of time. As Martin. Another fake handoff as he throws this one. A little bubble screen. Stokes to the five-yard line. Dodging another one into the end zone. Manville with a touchdown. And they take a 20-7 lead. Blocking up ahead for the Mavericks. Just well done from them all around. So they got their two score lead back before the end of the first quarter. What a high scoring first quarter this is. From two defenses, you wouldn't expect that. 
but it is two high-powered offenses as well. And his kick up and good. 21-7, your new score, 309 remaining in the first quarter. We'll take another break, but we shall return. You're watching the UIL playoffs on Texan Live, presented by Panera Bread. Hey fans, Bert Brock here, owner of TexanLive.com, and I'm here with DeAndre Hopkins. Catch the best in high school football live and on demand at TexanLive.com. Well, Manville has regained their two-score lead. 21-7 now, 3.09 remaining, still in the first quarter. Elon Stokes gets into the end zone. The Tulsa commit. He had some fantastic blocking for him, just a little simple bubble screen, and Martin found him. But uh, make no mistake. Not many wide receivers can pull off those moves and get into the end zone from that position. So the Mavericks again with a 21-7 lead as they'll kick this one right back over. Cedar Park, who had a pretty impressive drive on their third time around after giving the football up their first two possessions. On the far side, forced out of bounds before he could even hit the 30-yard line. And that's definitely going to be flags up after that one. There was some pushing and shoving. Manville side, one of the Cedar Park returners after he was trying to get up, wasn't even looking. So the personal foul is going to give him 15 extra yards and guarantee you that'll drive Coach Martin absolutely insane to give them 15 yards like that. Well, we see it happen all the time, especially here in these playoffs. getting the better of some of these players. Such an impactful game. The loser will not move on. They will finish their season. The winner moves on to the regional finals. A nice catch over here in the near side. And it's going to be made by Dalton Hayek. Gain of about seven yards. They'll make it second and three. Ball to 48-9 yard line in Manville territory. Going to throw this one on the far side. Hit really hard. What a hit. Inducted there from J.J. Joseph. That is how you play that position. You wait for that one. But I believe they're going to give him a first down on this one. Just indicated first down anyway. So he makes enough to get the first down. I can't believe he held on to that football. First down and 10 at the 46-yard line. Going around the corner here, a couple of stiff arms, but unable to get away. Tyler Levine on the carry. London Harris on the stop for Manville. A loss of one will make it second down, 11. 2-10. Remaining here in the first quarter. And just one in the backfield with Sexton. Takes a snap here, fake handoff. Looking to the far side, he's going to connect with one of his wide receivers, but he's not going to get much after making the catch. He may have even lost some yardage after trying to go backwards. It's been his main target, Carson Neal. He's targeted him quite often. He was able to pick up a couple of yards, three to be exact. Third down and eight. One and a half to go in the first quarter. On the far hash mark at the 44-yard line. Again, another throw on the near side and another big hit. As the ball comes loose, it's going to be an incomplete pass.
Pettisclo with the stop. A big hit from him forces the incomplete pass. It'll be fourth down and seven. We're now under a minute to play. Well, the clock continues to move, so they must have said that he did make the completion, even though the ball popped loose. I'm surprised by that. They'll have to punt it away anyway, and an empty backfield. They're chasing this one down, but unable to get to it, as this one will cross the goal line are the Timberwolves. So they'll bring this one back out, a touchback. And with 35 seconds remaining, and Manville is going to have the football back ahead 21-7. And you can see those that defense really kicking into gear. Three noted guys on that defense. Of course, Derek Tucker is going to be playing here at AM. Lance Bryan, he's committed to Indiana, the defensive end, and the linebacker London Harris, he's committed to Texas State for the Manville Mavericks. And that's why you see that defense just dominating this team for the most part. Forcing two turnovers just in the first quarter. Stokes with a carry on sweep. He's going to make it to the 22-yard line, a gain of two. We'll make it second down and eight as Manville. This could be the final play, but based on how fast they're moving the football right now, they could have time for two. A little bubble screen here is going to be caught and still going around a couple of tackles, getting to the 30. He's got the first down. He's still trying to get more, and that is just a fight in these Manville Mavericks. The flag does go up at the end of the play after the nice run from Jalen Preston. As we'll tell him to stop the clock with four seconds remaining. Could be an illegal block here. Could be a personal foul. That's going to go against Manville. So it is an illegal block, and it's going to come back. So this will likely be the final play. Granted, an incomplete pass on a quick little flat route. So no first down here. Second down and three, though. No, they will start the clock here. They just get it going, and that'll do it for the first quarter. Your score, Manville 21 and Cedar Park 7. Lots more football to come. Stay tuned right here on TexanLive.com. Download the Fox Sports Southwest Football Friday app. Connect and get live scores statewide. Find games near you. Plus, get your photos on our Friday night show. This is the one app that can handle high school football in Texas. Hit the App Store and type Football Friday. Dallas Stars Hockey is on Fox Sports Southwest. The sharp shooting stars led by Jamie Benn and Tyler Sagan hit the ice, looking to build off last year's incredible run and take back the Western Conference crown. All season long, count on Fox Sports Southwest to capture all the action. Watch Stars Hockey on Fox Sports Southwest and stream the games live on Fox Sports Go. Friday high school football isn't over till you watch High School Scoreboard Live. Final scores, big plays, plus the DQ Big Game of the Week. Be a part of the most watched high school football show in Texas. Friday nights on Fox Sports Southwest. One quarter down, three to go. Here at Kyle Field, Texas A&M and College Station. Lots of things I can say right now. It is a second and three situation here. That pass is going to be complete to a wide open receiver for Manville. Down to the 20, the 15, 10, 5, end zone. And they're going to say that he stepped out of bounds at the seven yard line. Boy, he was awfully close on the sideline. I'm actually surprised he didn't go out. He thought he had a touchdown. Joel Yvette, usually the running back, gets the reception here and a big gain. He was wide open. Nobody picked him up on the near side. So a missed assignment there from Cedar Park. It might cost him another score here. Just 10 seconds into the second quarter. Manville already threatening yet again. They could take a three-score lead here. Well, nobody had used any of their timeouts, and finally, Manville will use their first timeout. It comes just 10 seconds into the second quarter. We'll take a timeout with them. 
And be right back to watching the UIL playoffs on Texan Live presented by Panera Bread. The Black Friday savings start now at Big Star Ford. With extra bonus cash and huge savings, this is our biggest sale of the year. Get a new Ford F-150 Crew Cab for $32.9 or drive it for $3.20 a month. Or a new Ford F-250 for $36.3 or only $4.52 a month. If you've been waiting to buy, now is the time to save thousands at Big Star Ford's Black Friday event. Come see us on Highway 288, just minutes from Beltway 8. Or shop BigStarFord.com. You drive, we listen. Se habla espanol. Back in from the timeout for Manville. They want to make sure they get this one right. They see a very, very precious opportunity here, and they don't want to fall through it. First and goal at the seven-yard line after a big pass and catch from Martin to Joel Event. Lining up here, and somebody jumped early. And this is likely going to go on the offense. That's unfortunate, especially after a timeout. Manville, not what they wanted coming off a timeout, losing five yards before they can even get the football cleanly off. So the first and goal will now be from the 12-yard line. Martin's not even in the game. It's a direct snap. This one is actually going to go for a loss, a loss of about two. And that football come loose. Cedar Park seems to think they have it. No indication yet, and that that's the case. It usually means that the offense holds on to the football. And I believe that's the case here. It is. But a loss of two will make it second down and 14. So the Hokahay Spirit on the far sidelines. In a little bit of trouble here. All right, gonna air this one out. The back of the end zone and just out of the reach of his intended target on the far side. Keelan Stokes almost had his second touchdown of the game, but unable to come away with that one. So the incomplete pass will now make it third down and 14. If they can't convert here, they may have to settle for a field goal, in which case it would still be a three-score game, I believe, if I'm doing my math right. Two-score game, excuse me. Either way, 11.09, here we go. They're going to go to the end zone again. That one's going to be batted down. And just coming away with that one is Hunter Valk. He, he actually looks a little upset with himself. He thinks he should have had the interception. He does prevent, and he's got to look at the bright side of this, he does prevent Stokes from coming away with the touchdown grab. It was a very tight little window there for him. So it's going to force a 31-yard field goal attempt from Anvil. And flags go up before that one can even get off, and the offense can be pushed back. And if that's the case, it would be a 36-yard field goal attempt. It is. So it'll be fourth and 19 now, or fourth and goal at the 19 yard line. And another decision coming here for them. And I believe. They're going to take another time out here. No, I stand corrected. So no, they're not going to go for the field goal after the penalty. They're going to opt to go for it here on fourth and goal at the 19-yard line. Going for it all here. Aaron, this one out wide open to the far side. There it is in the end zone with a touchdown grab. The Manville Mavericks strike again. Joel Levette was the man who made the catch earlier, who thought he had the touchdown, but stepped out of bounds to the seven-yard line, which set up this last drive from them. 
So finally a minute goes off the clock here in the second quarter. Exactly 10.56 remaining. And that's going to put six more up on the board. A miss snap there. I'm not sure if it was a miss snap or a miss catch, but either way, the not, attempt's not going to be able to go up. So that's going to stay 27, but six more for the Manville Mavericks. They have a 27-7 lead. 10.56 to go in the first half. We'll take a quick break and be right back. You're watching the UIL playoffs on Texan Live, presented by Panera Bread. At Cavenders, we don't just wear the West, we live it. I live in comfortable boots. For big loops, big money. The smell of leather. Taking the back roads. In an old pickup truck. Getting on a bull. Eating one. I live for family. I love men with good manners. I love women with bad attitudes. I live for the West. Cavenders, don't just wear it, live it. Quite a drive there for Caleb Jolivet. He had a huge gain that got his team all the way down to the seven-yard line. He thought he got into the end zone, but uh, the sideline judge here caught him stepping out of bounds right on the line of the seven-yard line. A couple of penalties forced them to a fourth and goal at the 19-yard line. They were going to kick this one for a field goal, but they opted to go for it after the five-yard penalty. That would have forced a 36-yard try for their kicker, Moreno. Reno had only attempted one field goal on the season before that. So they opted to, in this stage, go for it, and it paid off. 19-yard strike on the far side to Gillette, the man who was supposed to get the touchdown to begin with, but he finishes it off. Another kick here out of bounds by Moreno. It was a 29-yard field goal that he had hit previously. And for PATs this season, he's 67 of 76. I think about 90% of his point afters. So Cedar Park's going to have to go to work here. They trail by 20. Pass over here to the near side. These Manville Mavericks are absolutely on a mission here. You can just tell there. Daniel, nowhere he could go after making that catch. They have just been all over this offense. Aside from their third drive of the game, they've been shut down. Sexton will hand this football off to Tyler Levine. Gets himself out to the 37-yard line. Gain of three there, will make it third down and about three. 10-15 remaining in the second quarter. Plenty of games going on around the area. We'll get to scores momentarily. As we look for a big third down and three. Run up the middle. Manville is going to stop him right at the 40-yard line. It's going to be pretty close to the first down. <laughs> Official timeout down the field. We'll go ahead and take it with them. Be right back here on Texan Live. The body is incredibly powerful. It's nimble and fluid. But sometimes we push it too far. That's when you need the strength of Memorial Hermann and our body of affiliated orthopedic specialists. With our Iron Man Sports Medicine Institute, they not only get your body back to where it was, they get it to go further. It's what makes us more than just hospitals. We are a body of experts. Memorial Hermann, advancing health. Hey fans, Burt Brock here, owner of TexanLive.com, and I'm here with DeAndre Hopkins. Catch the best in high school football live and on demand at TexanLive.com. Back in from that official timeout, 9.39 remaining in the first half. All three timeouts remaining for Cedar Park and only two remaining for Manville. 
It's a fourth down and one. Sexton with two in the backfield with him right to the side. One in motion now. And he's going to hand this football. Oh, he's going to keep it himself. And he looks like he's going to pick up the first down across the 40-yard line. The quarterback keeper. Only need one, got it about two. One and a half, two, something like that. Either way, it's first down. It's all Cedar Park cares about. As they get a fresh set of downs at the 41-yard line of their own territory. Again, one in the backfield with Sexton. He's wanting to throw the football here. He's going to air this one to the far side, and it's just out of the reach of his intended targets, Brent McDonald. Donald only seven receptions during the regular season, 102 yards. He can't come away with a catch there. That would have been a huge gain for him. Instead, it's second and ten. In trouble here, Sexton sees some open room, and he's going to run with it. He's going to dodge one tackle and now slide forward as he was pursued. And three minutes now gone by in the quarter. Gain of six there. will make a third down and four. Ball at the 47-yard line, still in their own territory. They're set up here nicely as you're going to go with a hurry-up offense now. They just need four yards. Another big third down coming up here. He's going to hand the football off. Nowhere. Alzer can go. And he's stopped before he can get to the first down marker. He need to get right about midfield to get to the first down. He's going to be stopped. Actually, two yards back. A loss of two will make it fourth down and six. Eight eighteen remaining in the first half. They converted on a fourth and 15 earlier. It looks like they're going to go for it again here on fourth and six. Can they go two for two and fourth down conversions in the first half alone? They're going to air this one out. That pass is going to be dropped. Almost caught. The drop at the last moment. He was looking for McDaniel. That was J.J. Joseph on the coverage. I think he got a hand on it just in the nick of time to knock that one loose. So a turnover on downs again. The defense comes up big here for Manville. That was a gutsy, gutsy call from Cedar Park. It almost worked out for him at the end. It's a pretty nice throw from Sexton. Just could not come away with it, though, it was McDaniel. And here comes Manville with... Fantastic field position already in the 45-yard line to start this drive in Timberwolves territory. 7.56 to go again here in the first half. Hard with a low snap. Fake handoff here. He's going to air this one out. And that one tipped up in the air and knocked away. Nice coverage there from Cedar Park. Stops the clock, 7.50 remaining. It'll be second down and 10. Twenty point lead for the Mavericks. And they want more. Flat route coming here after the hot route. Second and ten, he'll pick up eight yards. It's Stokes. So it'll be third down and two. As they move the football to the 37-yard line. Quick in the gun here. That one is going to be caught by Stokes. Nearly picked off. But that throw was right on the money as Stokes will pick up the first down. Timed out well by the defensive back. For the Timberwolves, I didn't catch who that was, but he just missed it. And a first down picked up for Manville down at the 27-yard line. Martin wants to throw the football again. He's got one across the middle. He's going to go to the far side with the football. It's uh, echoed about the 15-yard line. 7-19 remaining. It's 
Cam Scott on the reception. Another first down. So from the 15-yard line, Manville again threatening. Martin with a pump fake. We'll throw this one aired out in the back of the end zone. Incomplete. As he was looking for Jalen Preston. So that will make it second down and 10 as they're able to regroup here. With 6.59 remaining in the first half. Cedar Park has turned the football over twice in this game. It was on their opening two drives. The first one an interception. The second one a fumble. Popped out of the hands. Down to the 10-yard line, carrying a pile with them and getting down right in between the 6 and 7-yard line. Again, that was Preston. Who had just missed the reception in the back of the end zone earlier. So the gain here is going to make it third down and one. So that was a nine-yard pickup to the six-yard line. They pick up one yard here. They'll have three, possibly four chances to get into the end zone and increase this lead. Taking it across to the far side, dodging one tackle, dodging another one. Another impressive run there for Manville. Scott's been getting a lot of looks here. Contributing well, but no gain on that play. Fourth down and one. So a very, very big play here. And this game, as one might imagine, Cedar Park comes away with a stop. They'll prevent Manville from scoring. And you can tell they want to go for this one all the way. Keeping this one himself, Martin to the far side. He's in the end zone, but flags do go up around the 10-yard line. As this one probably is coming back, and it is a holding penalty against Manville. So this is probably going to be a different decision here for the Mavericks. And instead of fourth and one, they'll push the ball back 10 yards from either the spot of the foul or the line of scrimmage. And it was a line of scrimmage in this case. Fourth down and 11. So to the 16-yard line, it looks like they're going to try the field goal attempt here. 33-yard attempts. Moreno is not going to get this one off. So that's unfortunate for Manville, but very fortunate for Cedar Park. They stopped the Mavericks not only from getting into the end zone, but increasing that margin between the two of them. So Cedar Park will take over on downs, just as Manville did on the previous drive from Cedar Park. So they kind of exchange turnovers there on downs. And with 5.55 remaining in the second quarter, the Timberwolves they kind of need to score here. They need to move the football if they want to get back into this game. Trailing by 20 to the Manville Mavericks. Not a good thing, as a lot of their opponents can tell you this season. A throw on the near side is going to be caught in between two defenders and now aggressively thrown out of bounds. And after the whistle, a lot of Cedar Park fans not happy with that one. Carson Neal again on the reception as he picks up the first down out to the 39-yard line. So the chains move, fresh set of downs. Cedar Park doesn't get the penalty call, but they do pick up a first down. Trips left set for them. Five wide receivers set again. Look for the quarterback to run. He's not going to be able to. He's highly pressured here. Actually, he's going to have to run for his life. Is he going to air this one out? For an incomplete pass. It was heavily pursued by Rosette. As he forced him to make that throw out of bounds for the incomplete pass. Second down and 10 now, 528 remaining until the end of the first half. Stacked up here on the weak side, four wide receivers. One in the flat, and he's going to get the blocking here. 
Pass is going to be caught, but not much on it as Manville's defense broke through that screen. Did manage to pick up two yards. It'll be third down and eight. As he got out to the 41-yard line, 5.08 stopped on the clock. Manville with uh, two timeouts remaining. Cedar Park with all three of theirs still to go here. Trying to get a clear indication of what the referee is saying right now. They're going to keep the football at the 41-yard line. So another, another big third down here, and I imagine if they'll pick up some positive yards here and make it a little more manageable, they could go for it on fourth down. But let's get to this one first. There's a nice catch up the middle as he reached up and made the grab out to midfield. Impressive catch there, and I believe they're going to get the first down out of it. Drew McDaniel with the catch there. Stepping over the pocket, looking to run here. Plenty of room to work with, and he'll slide forward to the 35-yard line. Sexton picks up the first down yet again. And with four and a half to go here, his team looking awfully strong to the 37-yard line in Manville territory. And this is exactly what the Timberwolves needed. They need to score here. Simple flat round. McDaniel makes the catch, and he's immediately tackled by a group of Manville Mavericks. And flags go up here. Another penalty coming. Walker Williams made the stop. As he appeared to be clapping, they could have an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty against him. Unless something was said down on the sideline before that. And that is exactly the case here, the unsportsmanlike conduct, and that is the second one against Manville in the first half. So this nice drive from Cedar Park is going to keep on going. The automatic first down has him to the 22-yard line. Pile of Mavericks stopping the running back here. So that was Alzer again on the carry. 3.42 and ticking remaining in the second quarter. Another flat route, and they're going to throw this football on the option, and that's going to be caught by Alzer. A nice pick up there, but it's not going to pick up a first down, but some positive yards nonetheless. It's now a third and five coming. I imagine this is four down territory all the way here for Cedar Park. Sexton with the five wide receivers set alone in the backfield. Wanting to throw the football. He looks one way, turns, looks the other, and he'll throw this one in a nice defensive stop from the Manville Mavericks. Tolds. Cesare Tolds with the stop. With 2.53 remaining, the incomplete pass will bring up fourth down, and we'll see how big that play is after this one. Would have been a first down as Carson Neal would have made the catch, and if that had gotten past Tolds, and uh, he might have gotten to the end zone. But a timeout here from Cedar Park, their first one of the first half. Comes with 2.53 remaining. We'll take a timeout with them. Be right back here on Texan Live.
27 to seven. Your score, Manville with the lead. It's a fourth and five situation here for Cedar Park at the 17 yard line in Manville territory. 2.53 to go until the end of the first half. Sexton looks like he's going to have a four wide receiver set this time. The trips left, one in the backfield with him. He's had a five wide receiver set previously. So here we go, fourth down. They converted one out of two times. This one's going to be aired out to the back of the end zone, well over the double coverage. Flags do go up in the end zone, and this may be an automatic first down. Half the distance to the goal, it would be. He was looking for Samuel Barry, and London Harris had the coverage. So they are going to say he was being held as he was trying to get into the end zone. So they'll move the football up to the eight yard line. Again, 2.48 remaining until the end of the first half. Cedar Park needs this score. Sexton, as everybody's packed towards the weak side, he's going to hand the football off. Hauser gets it, uh, actually loses yardage on this one, it would appear. Loses two yards. So he's back to the 10 yard line. It'll be second down and goal from there. Don't forget about the halftime show. Uh, the two bands performing. Along with the drill and dance teams for each schools. Uh, Cedar Park and Manville High School. Approaching two minutes remaining. Two in the backfield now. Fake handoff here and a throw to the near side, and that one is going to be taken down immediately. Brian Johnson. The force to turnover earlier comes away with a big stop here. So they manage to get a yard closer, but it still brings up a third down and goal from the nine yard line. And I don't think Cedar Park wants Manville to have another opportunity on offense, or at least not with that much time anyway, because they're taking their time getting back to the line now. Seven seconds on the play clock, and they're going to have to go ahead and kill another one of their timeouts. They had two remaining, so with that timeout, they now have one remaining. 124 to go here in the first half. 27-7, your score, Manville with the lead. You're watching Texan Live. The Black Friday savings start now at Big Star Ford. With extra bonus cash and huge savings, this is our biggest sale of the year. Right now, get a new Ford Edge for only $306 a month. Or if you're looking for something a little bigger, drive a new Explorer for only $415 a month. If you've been waiting to buy, now is the time to save thousands at Big Star Ford's Black Friday event. Come see us on Highway 288, just minutes from Beltway 8, or shop BigStarFord.com. You drive, we listen. Se habla espanol. It's a third down and goal. They had the play clock go down to five, and it didn't look like they were ready for a play. They're still looking over at the sideline with Cedar Park. So I believe they were forced to call a timeout there with 124 remaining. They didn't want to be pushed back five more yards. They need this score if they want to get back into this game. Now trailing by three scores. Manville's been the only team to score here in the second quarter after 28 points were put up in the opening quarter with the two teams combined, that is. So here's the third and goal. That throw is going to be caught into the end zone, and Cedar Park will get the touchdown. And it's Omar Alzer that's in the end zone yet again, 27-13. And I know I sound like a broken record here, but they needed that. And the point after. 
Shifter is up and good from Cedar Park. 120 to go until the end of the first half. Your new score, 27 Manville and Cedar Park 14. You're watching the UIL playoffs on Texan Live, presented by Panera Bread. At Cavenders, we don't just wear the West, we live it. I live in comfortable boots. For big loops, big money. The smell of leather. Taking the back roads. In an old pickup truck. Getting on a bull. Eating one. I live for family. I love men with good manners. I love women with bad attitudes. I live for the West. Cavengers, don't just wear it, live it. One twenty to go until the end of the first half here at Kyle Field, home of the Texas A&M Fighting Aggies out of the SEC. A touchdown grab there on a third and goal situation from the nine-yard line. Sexton connecting with Alzer. And Cedar Park very much still in this football game. They stop Manville from scoring when well, they had a first and goal opportunity. Actually, they were close to a first and goal. They had a fourth and one on the six-yard line, unable to convert there after a penalty that went against them. They ended up turning the football over after a missed field goal. Actually, didn't even get the field goal attempt off. This one out of bounds again. It's Manville is unable to return this one. So Manville squandering an opportunity there to put at least three points up on the board. It would have been 30 to seven at that point. But Jensen has not wanted Manville to return any of these kicks. It'll be first down and 10. Uh, looks like here the Mavericks are going to want them to re-kick. So that's exactly the case here. That's your option. You can either take the penalty or you can force the other team to re-kick. So instead from the 40-yard line, Storm Jensen's going to have to kick this one away from his own 35-yard line. Again, it's Cam Scott at his own 20-yard line set to return this football. A little pooch kick in. I'm going to get to him as that was going to be taken at the 36-yard line, finding a couple of gaps on his feet. Another nice tackle across midfield. He's got one left to beat, and he's got a tackle here. He's trying to stay behind him to the 15, the 10. He's still on his feet in the end zone. A touchdown, Manville. Kalen Stokes. Returns this football over 60 yards. And whereas it looked like we we're headed into the locker room with a 27 of 14 game, Manville scores just like that. Fantastic blocking from Manville. And at the end, it was Stokes that was able to stay on his feet on the sideline. It looked like it was going to be forced out of bounds. But here with a point after, Moreno puts it up and in yet again. 34 to 14, the score here with 108 to go. We'll go ahead and keep it right here, though. And we draw more throughout these playoffs. There are a couple of games going on right now. Capel up 24 to 21 on Round Rock as they near halftime. Austin Bowie is up 21 to 10 on Duncanville at the half. Try to get you that other score as soon as we get an update over in Temple and Port Arthur Memorial.
There we go. We finally got an update over there. Temple running away. 32 to 7. They have the lead on Memorial with 315 remaining in the third quarter. One away to go here until the end of the first half. 34 to 14 after Manville just returned that touchdown by Stokes on the kickoff. They're going to kick this one off. This one's fielded at the 10-yard line on the far side. And not forced out of bounds. He actually stayed in bounds. So Hunter Vault gets his team out to the 28-yard line, but with only a minute three to go, they're going to have to move the ball in a hurry if they want any kind of score here before the end of the first half. They had just had an impressive drive in which they made it a two-score game again. And they could have regrouped, gone to halftime, but that kickoff return really hurts. Sexton to throw the football on the near side. And staying in bounds. I'm not sure he got out. Sawicki did not sure he got out of bounds or not. They place it down at the 38-yard line. It is a first down. One timeout remaining for Cedar Park. Two for Manville with the final 56 seconds. Five wide receivers set all alone in the backfield. This Sexton. He's pressured heavily. Manages to get away. I have no idea how he got away from the pressure there. He's going to have to throw the football away. But London Harris pursued it to him with full force. And just a little juke move and spinning away was Sexton. So he wasn't sacked. He was able to get rid of the football and able to stop the clock. More importantly for him and his team, 51 seconds now to go. It'll be second down and 10. Ball still at the 38-yard line. Again, going with that five wide receiver set. Manville not playing a prevent defense, though. In trouble again, Sexton to roll out. He'll air this one out. And that one's going to be caught at the 20-yard line, having to come back and make that catch. An impressive one at that, Drew McDaniel. A big gain there to the 20-yard line, inside the 20-yard line. They place it down to the 18. So they do have a fighting chance here. 38 seconds remaining. And they still have a timeout. To the end zone. That one is going to be caught. Touchdown. Drew McDaniel getting it done not once but twice. The point after is up and it is good from Jensen. 34 to 21, 32 seconds remaining. The conclusion of the second half right after this here on TexanLive.com. Hey fans, Burt Brock here, owner of TexanLive.com, and I'm here with DeAndre Hopkins. Catch the best in high school football live and on demand at TexanLive.com. Well, well, this is quite an exciting last few minutes here. In just under three minutes, we've had 
three scores, two of them by Cedar Park, one of them by Manville. There's still 32 seconds to go until the end of the first half. And they started off in their own 27-yard line, so that last drive went for 73 yards. Two huge catches, one downfield to set up that touchdown. Both of them coming from Drew McDaniel from Mackenzie Sexton. An onside kick here it is going to be fielded by London Harris as he falls on it. And we'll just recover it with 30 seconds remaining. I would put anything past either one of these two teams with 30 seconds remaining. And you see a lot of times here in a high school football season, teams will just make a couple of runs that they know aren't going to go for much just to run the clock down and be content with whatever score it is going into the half. But these two scoring at will, they're not giving up. And what a matchup we are seeing, no doubt about it. So from their own 48-yard line, an opportunity here for them. A four-wide receiver set. Martin almost loses the handle on that one. His throw to the far side is going to be incomplete. And he was looking for Preston, but off his right hand and falling down. Stopping the clock with 27 seconds remaining. Manville does have two timeouts remaining. The bright side of that one, they can regroup here. Martin Aaron, this one out again at the 10-yard line. The pass is going to be short as it was attended downfield to Cam Scott. The incomplete pass will now make it third down and 10. The clock stopped with 20 seconds remaining. Cedar Park does have one timeout remaining, so if, say, Manville gets an incomplete pass here, they can, or if they complete the pass, for a one-yard gain. Instead of running the clock down to zero, Cedar Park could stop the clock, force them to punt the ball and get the football back. I'm not sure that's going to be the case here, but here's a run to the left side, and that's going to stop him in the backfield at the 46-yard line. That's going to be a loss of two. So we fourth down and 12. And that'll likely take us to the end of the first half. Three seconds, two seconds. And Manville's going to actually call a timeout. Interesting strategy here for Manville with just two seconds remaining. They call a timeout on fourth and 11. Perhaps they're going to try for a Hail Mary here. And why not? Had a lot of success go their way in this half, racking up 34 points against the defending state champion. It's the end of the third quarter to be between Temple and Port Arthur Memorial, 32 to seven, Temple with the lead. Some other scores going around in the area. Bowie is up on Duncanville, 21 to 17, a little comeback by Duncanville in the third quarter, 9-12 to go there. Cinco Ranch up at halftime on Friendswood, 14 to nothing. Klein Collins up 28-6 from John Tyler at the half. And Westfield up 21-6 on Westbrook at the half over at Stallworth Stadium. Capel up 24-21 in Round Rock at the half. Here we go, the final play. As Martin looking to throw this one, we'll just make a simple little pass. Over here in the near side, breaking a couple of tackles, staying on his feet, now spinning, still on his feet. I don't believe this. Going to the far side. Jalen Preston, did he get in? He is. A touchdown from Manville to close out the first half. This has been unbelievable to watch. He kept moving, he kept dodging, spinning, getting every inch he possibly could on just a little short pass. What 
a run from Preston, and that is why they called the timeout, in case you're wondering. It all makes sense now. I don't know if they draw the play up quite like that, but it worked out in the end. Manville will go ahead and call their final timeout. And usually if that's the case, they might want to go for two here. This has been uh, absolutely everything we thought it could be. Manville, who would have thought they would have put up 40 points in the first half, and especially all the scoring that we've seen in just the final three minutes of the first half. Manville was the only team to have scored here in the second quarter. It was 21 to seven after one quarter. And now it appears it's gonna be 40 plus 41, 42. Somewhere around that range against the 21 for Cedar Park. I don't think anybody could have predicted this one. But that is the case. And I believe Manville is going to want to go for two here to make this a 21-point game. So here we go, a two-point conversion about to be executed here. Can they get it and go up by 21? No. It didn't look like Keelan Stokes had turned around in time, but Jalen Preston with an impressive run at the end of the first half will put Manville up 40 to 21 as the two teams head into the locker room. Again, stay tuned, everyone, for the halftime show here on Texan Live with the bands, the dance teams, and the drill teams. We'll see you for the second half here on Texan Live. Only one network is big enough to cover the great state of... Welcome back to the second half as we're about to get underway. The team's coming out of the locker room. Manville, obviously, with the... Uh, High scoring first half, 40 points they put up to 21 from Cedar Park. Uh, let's go over some first half statistics real quick. First downs, uh, actually Cedar Park in that category won the battle 13 to 11. Uh, leading the rushing department for Cedar Park. Actually not too much on that one. Six carries for each Levine and Hauser. About a 17-yard net there. 19 a gain by Levine. Two yards lost, so 17 yards total. No touchdowns from anybody except for Omar Alzer, and he got that one on a one-yard rushing touchdown. But when you look at the passing, for each team, Mackenzie Sexton, 17 of 24, does have the one interception, 197 yards in the air, two touchdowns. As long as one going for 45 yards. Casey Martin, the other side for Manville, 15 of 21, 262 yards, three touchdowns. As long as one going for 66 yards. And the rushing department for Manville, uh, they didn't have too many carries as they went to the air quite often. Uh, one rushing touchdown came from Sam Smith. He, Preston, and Stokes each had two rushes total. Caleb Jolovit had three rushes. And a net of not even 10 yards for each of those players. So the rushing's been a problem for both teams, as you can tell. That's why both teams have gone to the air quite often. On the receiving end, let's go to Cedar Park. Carson Neal leading the way there. He's been the favorite target. He's caught five of them for 62 yards. Uh, Drew McDaniel and Omar Alzer each have a touchdown reception. McDaniel with four receptions, 70 yards in the air with that touchdown. Uh, Omar Alzer with two receptions for 17 yards and that one touchdown reception. Peyton Sawicki with two receptions, 13 yards. As long as one going for 10 yards, actually. Manville leading them is Keelan Stokes. He has six receptions, 67 yards, one touchdown. Caleb Jolovit has two receptions. For 85 yards and a touchdown. And that big 66-yard run there in the second quarter. Jalen Preston, two receptions, 68 yards, a touchdown reception as long as one going for 53 yards. Cam Scott with two receptions, 24 yards. Got 12 yards in each of his catches. It's quite a quite a second quarter we had there at the very end. Uh, the scoring by quarter. It's 21 to 7 after one. Manville had a, the lead, obviously. 
And then they ended up taking the lead there in the second quarter. They won the second quarter 19 to 14. So that is where we got the 40 to 21. Ended with a tail impressive 53 yard touchdown run from Kaysen Martin. They tried for two at the end, but uh, were unable to get the two point conversion. So we're stuck here at 40 to 21. Cedar Park is going to get a football to start off this second half. So here we go. Second half underway as the football is kicked. Now Bobble there for a moment at the 20-yard line, now picked up. The punt return, or the kickoff returns, rather, have been decent. Obviously, uh, Manville had the one Touchdown return. What we thought was going to be the end of the first half. Cedar Park came and scored, and then, well, if you're watching the first half, then that 53-yard passing touchdown at the very end. Manville scored. Quite an entertaining last couple of minutes, no doubt about it. This one uh, broken up on the near side. Trent Gordon breaking that pass up for the Manville Mavericks. There's 10 seconds gone by. It'll be second down and 10 from the 29-yard line. Fantastic weather down on the field, 71 degrees. Sexton to throw here. Borderline of 200 yards completed. So Brian Johnson will force Carson Neal out of bounds there after he makes the reception of only three yards. So it'll be third down and seven as they push the ball up to the 32 yard line on the far hash mark. Five seconds gone by in the second half. Will the second half be as entertaining as the first one was? Even this one downfield well over his intended targets. It's Drew McDaniel, who he was targeting, Trent Gordon. On the coverage, that'll bring up fourth down. So a three and out here to start off the second half for Cedar Park as they're going to have to punt the football away. Jensen at his own 20-yard line. Ready to punt this one away. And that's actually Preston back to receive, but he's not going to get an opportunity as this one will bounce and roll out at the 30-yard line. So Kaysen Martin is offense coming back out on the field. Again, Martin 262 yards in the air, three touchdown passes, 15 of 21. Take his offense back out. Exactly one minute has gone by. Ready for the first play here, and already a whistle blown. And the offense likely to go back on the fall starts. So now it'll be first down and 15, as opposed to first down and 10. As a push back to the 25 yard line. Ball still in the left hash mark. Right around the SEC logo here at Texas A&M University. Here's a handoff, and taking this one to the right side. Puts in Eric Prince. Prince had a touchdown run in the first half.
Looking to throw here, Martin, and double coverage. That ball is going to be intercepted at the 30-yard line. Thomas Sacco coming away with the interception, and that could be a turning point in this game. 10.32 to go. Manville will turn the football over for the first time besides the turnover on downs that they had. Cedar Park actually turned the football over, and their first two possessions have held the football very well since then, have not turned it over other than on downs. And here they are with the fantastic gift for the offense. A five wide receiver set for Sexton as he's alone in the backfield again. He hasn't run in this certain formation. He's in pressure here, and he's going to throw this one over to the far side as that one is going to be caught. Daniel Rosenthal with the reception. Gain of seven will make it second and three. Ball on the 22-yard line. Ten twenty-seven remaining in this third quarter. Finally getting the snap off here. Throwing this one in the corner. That's going to be a tough play and a pass interference likely coming here. As he was again targeting Rosenthal. Pettisglow on the coverage is going to be called for the pass interference. So that's going to make it an automatic first down as they move the football half the distance to the goal. Usually a 15-yard penalty. Well, it's within the 30-yard range. It's going to be half the distance to the goal. So a first and goal. Amazing opportunity here for Cedar Park to get back in this football game. They fought very hard. But they need to keep it going. They want to stay even with Manful Mavericks, at least for the time being, for they can make a jump here. And the run here going for nothing. He just got back to the line of scrimmage. It'll be second down and seven. As two minutes have now gone by in the third quarter. Two in the backfield with Sexton. One in motion. He's going to hand the football off and over to the left side. Tyler Levine, who didn't have too many looks in the first half. Nobody really did on the ground for either either side. Ready to go here, a third and goal. Ball still in the seven yard line after no gain. Looking to throw the football in the back of the end zone, wide open. Somehow he managed to get away from everybody. And Cedar Park gets the touchdown. As Sexton finds Alzer, Samir Alzer, not Omar Alzer. It's a different one. Jensen with a point after is up, and it is good. 9.14 to go here in the third quarter, and Cedar Park strikes first in the second half thanks to that turnover. We'll take a quick break and be right back. You're watching the UIL Playoffs on Texan Live, presented by Panera Bread. Clean food. Words you don't often hear. Words we at Panera live by. Because clean food is food as it should be, with no artificial flavors, preservative sweeteners, and no colors from artificial sources. We think clean food tastes better, feels better, does better. 100% of our food will be clean by year's end. Every bite will be food as it should be.
9-14 to go. A touchdown strike in the back of the end zone. That found Samir Alzer. Makes it a 40-28 score. And that's interception. See, it was Manville that was able to take advantage of that in the first half. And this time, it's Cedar Park that takes advantage. So they trimmed this lead down. The deficit they face now is only 12. So Manville will get the football back. Storm Jensen, another line drive kick, and that might go out of bounds again, and it does. Cam Scott looked like he was going to return it for a moment, but wisely let it go out of bounds. And we saw them re-kick this one before the end of the first half. And the football actually ended up being placed back to the 35-yard line, and on the kickoff, it was returned for a touchdown. Keelan Stokes returned at 66 yards. With a minute eight to go in the second quarter. At the time, made it a 34 to 14 game. So once again, they're gonna opt to make Jensen re-kick this football. Of it on the near side. Cam Scott back deep. Should it go back to him? So with 9 14 to go, they'll try this one again. Another line drive, as this one will be fielded right at the goal line. Taken deep out of his own end. Trying to go forward with it. Runs in the back of one of his own players. So he's not going to get uh, still on his feet. As I say that, he's about to go down. Still managed to pick up some more yardage after the fight. So Cam Scott takes this one to the 17-yard line. Flags are up around the 10-yard line over here. So this one actually could go back even further for Manville. And it will, the holding penalty against him will push it back. 10 yards or half the distance to the goal. So they'll start the football off from their own five yard line it appears. And that's a tough place to be in. 9.03 to go in the third quarter. And we'll turn the football over last Possession, simple flat round, it's going to be dropped. And if that was a backwards pass, Cedar Park was all over it, but they're going to say that was right on the line there, as that one was incomplete. Jolivet cannot come away with the reception, and that could have been even worse if that one was considered a backwards pass, because Cedar Park would have had the football right at the one, or they could have considered that a touchdown. The incomplete pass, second down and 10 from the five-yard line. A quick pass on the far side is going to be caught and forced out of bounds near the first down marker. And they needed that one to give themselves some breathing room. Caleb Blanton gives them the first down, and now they're going to try another running play, and they've just been unsuccessful with that. The entire game, Cedar Park has as well. As that one doesn't go for much. Actually, no gain. It's ball to 16-yard line, second down and 10, 8.35 to go on the third. Fake handoff, and this one's going to be a slant route. That's complete. Trying to pick up some extra yardage here, now forced out of bounds. Right at the 26-yard line with forward motion is Keelan Stokes. And if 
Falk on the stop. Pickup of nine yards, third down and one. Ball the 25-yard line on the near hash mark. They're going to snap here. This throw is going to be downfield, and not sure if that was intentional or not, but he and his wide receiver, Eric Bennett, a little off there as they're unable to pick up a first down. And with only a yard to go, I'm surprised they tried something like that, but... Does bring up fourth down. With only one yard to go, and their own 25, they're going to take the safe route and just punt this one away. Whole line drive kick, fair catch is going to be called near midfield at the 49 yard line. It's Hunter Falk. It's the fair catch. 7.51 to go, and again, Cedar Park is going to take over on offense with pretty good field position here. Drew McDaniel had the most yards in the first half. Carson Neal had the most receptions. Mackenzie Sexton. Now over 200 yards in the air on the football game. Trying to lead him and his team back out on offense. 7.51 to go. Here's their first play of their next drive. And a nice tackle on the near side. Trent Gordon on the stop. And Tyler Levine took it to the outside. Official timeout down the field. We'll take it with them. Be right back on Texan Live. The body is incredibly powerful. It's nimble and fluid. But sometimes we push it too far. That's when you need the strength of Memorial Hermann and our body of affiliated orthopedic specialists. With our Ironman Sports Medicine Institute, they not only get your body back to where it was, they get it to go further. It's what makes us more than just hospitals. We are a body of experts. Memorial Hermann, advancing health. Second down and eight situation back from the official timeout. 7.36 to go in this third quarter. Cedar Park looks like they're slowly getting back into this ball game. They got plenty of time to do so. Trailing by two scores right now, but they were trailing by three at the start. Pretty good field position here at the 49-yard line. Stepping up is Sexton. He's running out of room, and he's going to manage to pick up some extra yardage here. And a nice little fake to his left going to his right. Making something out of nothing, the key there. Five yards he picked up, third and three to go at the 44-yard line. Now approaching seven minutes ago. Play clock at eight. You get a snap off. Sexton's going to keep it himself. Finding a little bit of a hole to get through. And finally, he'll be taken down. Combination of Derek Tucker and Trent Gordon on a stop for Manville. 6.38 remaining in the third. Another first down picked up. All the 38 yard line in Manville territory. Sweep across coming here and just tucking this one away and taking what he could get there. It was Carson Neal. He managed to pick up a yard. Neal had one carry in the first half for two yards. 
Actually, they're going to give him two there. Second down and eight, 36-yard line. Looking for the option. He's going to use it. But coming away with a nice stop in the backfield. So it's number 13 for the Manville Mavericks. That was Cameron Pettisclo. So the clock now ticking under five and a half. Third down and 14, a big situation here for the Manville defense. They come away with a stop, otherwise Cedar Park is going to continue this drive and with momentum. Sexton, nothing he likes downfield. He'll opt to throw this one on the near side. Is that one caught? They say it is. A fantastic grab to convert on third and 14. Peyton Sawicki. They had two receptions in the first half. Makes a fantastic catch there to the 20 yard line. His team still driving. Sexton wants to throw the football again. He's under high pressure, and a flag goes up in the backfield. Priest Taylor comes away with a sack, and he's going to get it because the holding penalty against Cedar Park is going to be declined. So instead of taking a 10-yard loss and keeping it first down, they'll take the 9-yard loss and lose it down. The wise decision by Kirk Martin and the staff. So second down and 19, ball pushed back to the 29-yard line after the sack. Sexton rolling out. He's looking to the right side. He's going to throw the football virtually wide open at the 10-yard line. Again, making that grab. The man who made us so many great catches in the first half, Drew McDaniel. Big game there, 17 yards. Still two to get to the first down. Another big third down play coming here. It's going to be handoff to the left side, and there is that defense coming away with another big stop. But it looks like he had enough to pick up the first down. That was Levine on the carry, and he does indeed pick up the first down inside the 10-yard line, so the chains will drop. It'll be first down and goal. Now under four minutes remaining in the third. Putting on the snap here. Fake handoff, Sexton in trouble, wants to throw. He's going to throw it, and that one's going to be intercepted and somehow keeping this one up with his right hand. And now going with it out of the end zone. I think he should have just stayed in the end zone. But he takes it out. The important thing for Manville is they came away with the interception. And bring this one out to the four-yard line. What a defensive stop for Manville. As they come away with their second interception of this game, the third forced turnover from the Manville defense. It comes with 3.43 remaining in the third quarter. And that could be the difference in this game. We'll have to wait and see. There is plenty of time remaining, but a lot of factors in this game throughout the game have played a role in this score. That one, Cedar Park, definitely will be looking back on as it looked like they're about to make this a one-score game. To the left side, and a nice run. He had plenty of them in the first half. Jalen Preston trying to find his way going forward. And see where they mark the football at. They only give him a yard with forward motion. So it'll be second down and nine as he gets it to the five-yard line. And if Manville would have just stayed in the end zone, they could have had the football back out to the 20-yard line. Instead, they're in a tough position here. Stokes on the sweep. They're going to hand the football off up the middle. And 
that's a pretty big gain. The left side still on his feet going. Sam Smith will be chased out of bounds at the 27 or 28 yard line of his own terry territory. Excuse me. A nice pick up there to give his team the first down and get those chains moving again. They started at the four yard line. They had to fight their way out of there. Did a fantastic job of that. Can they keep this one going? Now under three minutes to go. Sweep on the far side. It's going to be taken by Prince. He's still down the sideline now, forced out of bounds. Right in midfield, nearly getting into Cedar Park territory. Manville looking awfully strong now. Again, both of these teams undefeated, winning their respective districts. Manville, the 23-5A champions. Cedar Park, the 19-5A champions. Battling it out here, very close score. 12 points separate them with 2.49 to go. This run is going to go to the left side, and actually it's going to go for a loss of four yards. Second and 14, as they're backed up to their own 46-yard line, are the Mavericks. Two and ticking. Looking to throw this one up the middle. It's going to be caught. Stokes on the reception. And it's Valak on the stop. Push the football up to the 44 yard line. A nice gain there of 10 yards. Still third down though. Four yards they need for the first down. And this one is going to be caught by Stokes. What an amazing catch. I thought for sure that was going to be an incomplete pass. He reached up, made the catch. And he gets his team the much needed first down to keep those chains moving. Up to the 21 yard line now in Cedar Park territory, under two minutes to go. It's gonna come down to the wire here in this drive. Very close plays. They haven't, they haven't made it easy, the defense for the Timberwolves. Anvil's really had to work for this one. There's a reverse going to the left side. Could he get in the end zone? There's a flag that goes up. He did manage to get into the end zone on the carry there. It was Cam Scott, but flags will bring it back right around the five yard line. They saw a hold. So that occurred around the five yard line. That'll push him back to the 15. No touchdown. 118 to go. Still in the third quarter. Manville has not scored in this third quarter. After putting up 21 in the first quarter and 19 in the second quarter, Cedar Park's defense has Held them scoreless thus far, but they're looking mighty strong here to the right side. Manages to break a tackle, still on his feet, and maybe forward, forced out of bounds around the 14 yard line. Pretty nice run there from Caleb Jolovic. Hunter Falk on the force out. 111 to go. Second down and two. Ball on the 13-yard line. Another flat route. That's going to be dropped. A little bit too much on that pass as he was looking for Sam Smith. So that'll make it third down and two. Only took about four seconds off the clock. 107 to go. Cedar Park winning this half. Seven to nothing. Own touchdown. Throw up the middle. Do we have one here? No. Incomplete pass up high. Xavier Owens with fantastic coverage there. As he was unable to find Adam Scott. 104. To go fourth and two. Big play coming here. 
looking to throw this one, and that's going to be awfully close. I think he made it, though. Stokes on the reception inside the 10-yard line, so that'll give them the first down manville. At the nine-yard line, keep this drive going. That was a pretty big play. Stokes will take it on the sweep. He drives the dive forward, and he'll be stopped before he could get even to the five-yard line. Keegan Nichols leading the stop there, along with the host of Timberwolves. 27 seconds and taking in the first. It'll be second down and goal from the eight-yard line. Just a one-yard pick up there. Big handoff here, throw into the back of the end zone. That one dropped. Scott almost came away with it. I was unable to hold on. Again, that was Owens on the coverage. So a third down and goal. Ball still at the eight yard line. Quick pass to the near side, it's gonna be caught. But he's gonna be stopped before he can get even back to the original line of scrimmage, and that'll take us to the end of the third quarter. When we come back, a fourth down and goal situation for the Manville Mavericks. They're shut out here in the third quarter, but they still lead 40 to 28. Fourth and final quarter is right after this on Texan Live. Only one network is big enough to cover the great state of Texas, and only one show travels across the state to get the skinny on high school sports every week all year long. You want the best in high school sports? Catch High School Spotlight on Fox Sports Southwest. In Texas cities far and wide, in towns big and small, Friday night means only one thing, high school football. When the bell rings, football is king. This is the way we cover the game. We have several interesting games. We will live look in. Highlights, live analysis, updated scores. Fox Sports Southwest Football Friday. Download the Fox Sports Southwest Football Friday app. Connect and get live scores statewide. Find games near you. Plus, get your photos on our Friday night show. This is the one app that can handle high school football in Texas. Hit the App Store and type Football Friday. Three quarters down, one to go here. Kyle Field, side of Texas A&M University, 28 to 40. Cedar Park with the deficit here. They face a 4 and 12 though, Manville. And if they kick the field goal here, it would still be a two possession game, but it'll be a tough two possession game. They're gonna opt to go for it here. From 12 yards out, and they're not gonna get it. A huge defensive stop there as they knew that they were going to pass the football. The rush came on, it came on strong. Nothing Martin could do about it, and the loss on downs to start off this fourth and final quarter. It's been a fantastic game thus far. Thanks again, everybody, for being a part of this Texan Live family and joining in on our coverage here today. As we're still not done yet. Cedar Park have a comeback in them. This one, a pass on the far side is going to be caught wide open, getting out to the 40-yard line in Manville territory. What a catch. Carson Neal, the main target all day long for Sexton as he comes away big there. First up to date here, 253 yards for Sexton in through the air before that pass. 22 of 32. Has thrown two interceptions, though. Those three touchdowns have been big, though. He's been sacked once. Just 15 seconds in. Let's run the left side. It's not going to go for much. Kaysen Martin, 21 of 33. Did have that interception, but 314 yards through the air. Uh, three touchdowns. Was not sacked until most recently. 
Mountain Slant. It's going to be thrown on the near side. And again, it's going to be caught by Carson Neal. Let's try to see here if Carson Neal had any receptions in that second quarter. He did have one. So he's got two here. Brings total to eight. As he's approaching 100 yards in the air. Third down and nine from the 36-yard line. 11.23 to go in this ball game. Waiting here and trying to throw this one. Sexton steps up in the pocket, now will roll out. He's still down the sideline, will step out of bounds at the 30-yard line. So that'll make it fourth down as he's unable to pick up the first down. Needs to get to the 27-yard line. Stuck at the 30 right now. Levine has had the most attempts on the ground. And that's from Cedar Park. He's got a total of 22 yards, though. Kenzie Sexton has the most with 24. Smith with 29 and Prince with 28 on the other side. Nobody's used any timeouts here in this first half, so Cedar Park will go ahead and take their first one. It comes with 11-16 to go in this ball game. You're watching the UIL playoffs on Texan Live, presented by Panera Bread. You know, you see a little bit of everything here. Whether it's down a city block or along a country road, this is home. If we're looking out for friends and neighbors, well, it's a way of life. More than auto, home, life, fences, crops, and livestock. It's about moments. And moments worth covering are never accidents. So call 877 Farm Bureau. You could save up to 40% on your auto insurance. Eleven sixteen to go in this ball game. A fourth and three, a big one coming up here for Cedar Park. Command will come up with a big stop here and really make the hearts race on the other side for Cedar Park. Here it is, fourth and three. The pass is going to be caught on the near side, and they're going to pick up the first down. They draw up those fourth down plays very nicely, and they convert here yet again. That's Dalton Hayek on the reception. First time that he has made a reception. That is the fifth different wide receiver for Cedar Park to make a reception in this ball game. Sexton, they air this one out on the far side and a little bit too out ahead of his intended target. He was covered very nicely on the far side. He was looking for Drew McDaniel. It was Derek Tucker on the coverage. Stops the clock, 11.07 to go. Second and 10, ball still in the 22-yard line. Four different wide receivers have, or receivers, I should say, have made a, a catch for Manville. Not much of a difference there. These teams have been pretty even for the most part in certain categories. But not even in the main department. That's the score, 40 to 28. Sexton looking to throw this one to the back of the end zone. That one's going to be, oh, is it going to be caught? They're going to say completed in the end zone. Touchdown. What a wacky little play there, but they're going to go ahead and credit the touchdown to Carson Neal. As one of the defenders from Manville looked like he was about to come away with the interception. It tipped off his finger and went to the other one. Or went to Neal, I should say. He was tackled right at the goal line. It came loose at the very end, but they're going to say he had possession while he was in the end zone. So the touchdown will stand. It is a one-score game now. And just awaiting on a PAT from Jensen to make it a five-point game. And it would be a huge one, and it is. 35 to 40, your new score. We're just a little over a minute into this fourth and final quarter. We'll step out for just a moment. We shall return. You're watching the UIL playoffs on Texan Live, presented by Panera Bread. The Black Friday.
savings start now at Big Star Ford. With extra bonus cash and huge savings, this is our biggest sale of the year. Right now, get a new Ford Edge for only $306 a month. Or if you're looking for something a little bigger, drive a new Explorer for only $415 a month. If you've been waiting to buy, now is the time to save thousands at Big Star Ford's Black Friday event. Come see us on Highway 288, just minutes from Beltway 8, or shop BigStarFord.com. You drive, we listen. Se habla espanol. Well, a touchdown grab here from Cedar Park. And with 10.58 remaining in this ball game, things have definitely, definitely turned a corner. Cedar Park has held Manville scoreless so far in the first 13 minutes of the second half. It was 40 to 21 coming out of the locker room. And 14 straight put up here from Cedar Park have them very much in this ball game. Now only trailing by five as they kick this one away. And that again is going to go out of bounds. Jensen's had trouble keeping it in bounds on those line drive kicks. He does not want, clearly, Cam Scott to return the football. But as he sent back five yards, it's kind of cost them in a sense because a touchdown was returned for 66 yards for Manville on a kick that was out of bounds. Keelan Stokes, the big uh, big target for Cason Martin. Ten receptions for him, now 112 yards in the air to go along with that touchdown grab. Cam Scotts with three receptions. And Jolivet and Preston each with two receptions. Those are really receiving leaders thus far for the Manville Mavericks. Carson Neal just made his ninth reception. He's now over 100 yards. That was his first touchdown grab. His longest one going for 45 yards. So they're going to try this one again, and that one is going to be kicked. Backpedaling at the two-yard line. Taking this one forward is Cam Scott. He's going to be tripped up. Nice stop there on special teams. Manville with the lead, but not with the momentum. 14 unanswered points from Cedar Park. Have them in a bit of trouble. They've lost each of the past two seasons in the regional finals, but that was at the 6A level. Here they are trying to boost their way forward get to the regional finals again, only this time in 5A. Shadow Creek opened up, another Alvin ISD school, so it took some of the kids away from Manville, so they've dropped now to 5A. Still a very powerful team. To the right side after making a nice run before of seven yards. One of the far side, Sam Smith will get out of bounds at the 30-yard line. That's going to be good for the first down. 10.26 to go in the game. Fresh set of downs for Manville. To the right side on his feet across midfield. Still piggybacking someone along with him. Another fantastic run this time coming from Jalen Preston. Nice game there out to the 39-yard line. An official timeout down on the field. We'll go ahead and take it with him. We'll be right back on Texan Live. Clean food. Words you don't often hear. Words we at Panera live by. Because clean food is food as it should be, with no artificial flavors, preservative sweeteners, and no colors from artificial sources. We think clean food tastes better, feels better, does better. 100% of our food will be clean by year's end. Every bite will be food as it should be.
Well, today wraps up the third round of the Texas high school football playoffs. Head on over to TexanLive.com during the week to see the full slate of round four matchups. And also keep in mind that in the playoffs, a UIL ban on Friday night, live streams are lifted. So all of our games will be streamed live right here on Texan Live. Fresh set of downs here, fresh out of the official timeouts. And it's about to get started here. Back from the break. Anvil having a very exceptional drive here. Can he keep it going, though? Four wide receivers set. One in the backfield, looking to throw the football. Martin pump fakes will now throw it down the sideline. He's got a man open. That pass is going to be caught and in the end zone. Touchdown, Manville. And that is a huge touchdown grab from Eric Bennett. Bennett did not have a reception to this point. Had been targeted one or two times, but had not made a reception. That is definitely a way to get your first reception. As he's increased this lead back up to 11, and can they make it 12 again? Pending this PAT attempt. Moreno puts it up and through, and it's back to a 12-point game. That didn't take very long. 10-10 to go in this game. We'll be right back here on Texan Live. At Cavenders, we don't just wear the West, we live it. I live in comfortable boots. For big loops, big money. The smell of leather. Taking the back roads. In an old pickup truck. Getting on a bull. Eating one. I live for family. I love men with good manners. I love women with bad attitudes. I live for the West. Cavendish, don't just wear it, live it. Welcome you back into Kyle Field in College Station. Mark M. Johnson along my production engineer, Jesse Wolf. 47-35, 10-10 remaining in this ball game. A nice touchdown grab and his first reception of the game, Eric Bennett from Case and Martin. That's his fourth touchdown pass of this game. I'll keep you updated. I know you don't have a time on our, on our screen, so we'll keep you updated as much as we can on the time here. That only took one second off the clock. And as that one is fielded on the far side and out of bounds at the 19-yard line. It all started with a generic Prince one-yard touchdown run. Sam Smith then had a one-yard touchdown run. Omar Alzer finally responded for Cedar Park. With a three-yard touchdown run of his own, Manville then had two scores from Keelan Stokes and Caleb Jolovit. And Omar Alzer scored again. Keelan Stokes had another kickoff return for a touchdown. Cedar Parks, Drew McDaniel, had a touchdown pass to Mackenzie Sexton. Well, from Mackenzie Sexton, I should say. Manville's Jalen Preston then scored on a 53-yard touchdown pass from Kaysen Martin. Cedar Park, Samir Alzer with a 70-yard touchdown pass from Sexton again. At that point made it 28 to 40 in favor of Manville. Got to catch up as much as we can. This pass on the far side is going to be caught. Peyton Sawicki, who made a fantastic catch in the third quarter to keep a drive alive, comes away with a catch here. Fourth reception of the game for him. 9.45 remaining. Napping the football, going to the outside. That's going to be dropped this time by Sawicki. He could not come away with it. So that stops the clock with exactly 9.40 remaining in the game. Third down and six coming here from the 23-yard line. Would have been close to the first down had he made the catch. Another five wide receiver set. We have not seen Sexton throw the football 
or excuse me, run with the football in these certain situations like we've seen all season long from other offenses. He usually wants to use those receivers, and he does again here. Pass complete on the near, or the far side, excuse me. That one, Daniel Rosenthal. First and 10, ball on the 38-yard line, Timberwolves territory. Another five wide receivers set. Looking to the right side, and an incomplete pass. My depth, depth perception up here got the better of me. So Dalton Hayek, the only one in the vicinity of that pass. 9.31, the clock stopped again. Cedar Park has used one of their three timeouts in the second half. Manville with all three remaining for the final. 9.30. Pass complete. And the catch is going to run all the way out to midfield. Carson Neal. Stopped by Derek Tucker, but not before he can pick up the first down. They're going to spot this one at the 49-yard line, still in Timberwolves territory. They're going to the air again. And this one is going to be incomplete, nearly picked off on the deflection. Dalton Hayek again, the target. Gordon again with the coverage for Manville. 9-10 remaining. And with these passing, the passing game that both of these two teams have done, it should be a fairly long fourth quarter. That pass is going to be awfully close, but it looks like it's going to be intercepted by Manville. And it is J.J. Joseph, who is at tight coverage and come away with some big stops and deflections in this game, comes away with the interception, and Manville will take over with 9.02 to go in this ball game. It'll be interesting to see what they do here with a 12-point lead. Will they run the football? They haven't had much success in the running department. Seventy-five yards heading into the fourth quarter for Manville on the day. That's total. Stopped in the backfield here for a loss. Cam Scott unable to get away there. Loses five yards. Second down and 15 as he's pushed back to his own 22. 34 ticking. They can off and the throw to the far side it completes. As Nicholas Greenwell tight coverage on Jalen Preston forced the incomplete pass. Third and 15 now. 8.24 to go. You can expect a passing play here. be a short one, a little bubble screen on the far side. It's going to be caught. Preston down the sideline is going to be brought down at the 32-yard line. Well shy of the first down marker. Bring up fourth down at five. The four minutes gone by in the fourth and final quarter. Manville will have to punt the football away. They did end up getting 10 yards after the, the five-yard loss, but that five-yard loss kind of hurt them in that first run. It's 
Standing at his own 35-yard line is Hunter Valk. As a punt falls right at the 35, a whistle stop the play dead. As a false start, he's going to push the offense back five yards. 7.35 remaining. And this should be an interesting conclusion between these two 5A powerhouses. Again, Cedar Park was the state champions last year. Manville dropped down from 6A to 5A this season. After having nice runs in Division II 6A football the past few years, losing only to the state finals and state champion, Katie Tigers. Fair catch called this time at the 40-yard line. Actually, they're going to spot this at the 39. And with 7.29 remaining, Cedar Park with pretty good field position here as we'll come back out. Three timeouts remaining for Manville for the final 7.29, two for Cedar Park. Well, today wraps up the third round of the Texas High School football playoffs. Head over to TexanLive.com during the week to see a full slate of round four matchups. Also keep in mind that in the playoffs, UIL ban on Friday night. Live streams are lifted, so all of our games will be streamed live right here on Texan Live. A first and ten as they start this drive. Sexton will throw the football on the far side. It's going to be caught. Good for the first down, down to the 41-yard line as the whistles stop. Blow this play dead. Drew McDaniel with a catch. So another fresh set of downs. The clock continues to tick here, 7-15. Down by two scores. They Want to progress here and at least get something on the board. Falling down, getting back up and making the catch on the far side. An impressive catch there at the 30-yard line. Brant McDonald getting back into the action here. Not that play was virtually dead, but he picks himself right back up and makes the opportunity worth it. 6.48 remaining. First and 10, ball on the 30-yard line. Throw to the outside, and that one off the fingertips of his intended target. That was Daniel Rosenthal again. He's targeting him quite often these past couple of drives. But the incomplete pass stops the clock at 6.42. Second down and 10. Ball on the far hash mark, the 30-yard line. Fighting his way forward, and he manages to break some tackles and drag some people along with him on second down and 10. Gets eight yards, third and two. Omar Alzer. Tucker on the stop. Six oh six, almost halfway through this fourth quarter. Handoff to the near side and taken down very aggressively there. That was Peyton Sawicki on the carry. Five forty eight and ticking. Got enough for the first down. First and 10, ball on the 19-yard line. In trouble. Sexton will throw this one to the back of the end zone, and it's incomplete. As he was looking for Daniel Rosenthal yet again. Stops the clock at 536. Bring up second down and 10.
backfield with Sexton. He's in a bit of trouble here again, and he's going to go down at the 35-yard line. A big sack. The Priest Taylor comes away huge there for Manville. And that is a 15-yard loss. Third down and 25. Going to put him down at the 34. 509 remaining. They need some positive yards here to make up for the damage caused on that last play. Five wide receivers sent. There's actually one in the backfield, so less than the line here. Flags go up. Another five-yard penalty pushes them back to their own 39. This is an even tougher situation. Third down and 30. Screen set up here on the flat. Picking up some good yardage here, at least positive yardage anyway. Now to the 30-yard line, stopped just shy of the 30 at the 31. It'll be fourth down and 22, and unfortunately for Cedar Park, this is for Four down territory for them, 438 ticking. Tyler Levine on that last catch. So timeouts by Cedar Park. It's their second one. And again, 436 remaining in this ball game. 47 35 your score, Manville with the lead. You're watching the UIL playoffs on Texan Live, presented by Panera Bread. Again, it has gone final in the other game. Temple defeated Port Arthur Memorial 39-7, so winner of this game will take on Temple next week for the regional championship. 4.36 to go here, fourth and 22. Low snap. He's going to fire this one up the middle, hit as he was thrown. Incomplete pass and a turnover on downs. So with 4.31 remaining, Manville's going to take over. With those three timeouts remaining, Cedar Park can only stop the clock one time. And you've got one timeout remaining. And with a 12-point lead, one more score here for Manville should just about do it. Barnes stepping up here. He's got a man down the field, and he's going to underthrow him just slightly. Ever so close to hitting Stokes on the far side. Nicholas Greenwell ended up deflecting that one down for Cedar Park. Clock stop with 4.23 remaining. Second down and 10, ball still in the 31 yard line. There's a handoff to the left side, and that's going to be up to the 35 yard line. Smith on the carry. Picks up about four yards, third down and six. 404 has done a smart decision here and had that clock. Tick down, 23 seconds on the play clock. They can take it down, close to three and a half to go. Manville's been held to only seven points here in the second half after putting up 40 in the first half. 
done everything they can to get back into this game, Cedar Park, but perhaps they dug too big of a hole for themselves. So the false start against Manville will push them back five yards. It'll be third down and 11 from their own 30-yard line. Clock down to 335. But they can keep the clock going again as it resets back up to 25. So they can take this one down close to three minutes before they get the football off. Now down to 315 in the game. Play clock at three. They get the snap off. Throw to the right side, a little bubble screen. I'm not sure that was completed pass. They're going to say it was. It looked like it hit the ground for a moment. So I am eight floors up, so go based on what the referees say. That was Jalen Preston again on the, on the reception. 2.50 remaining. Fourth down and 11, though, coming up for Manville. As they get back up to the 30-yard line of their own territory. Play clock at 15. As they continue to let it just tick down. Now down to seven. Two and a half to go in the game. Down to four. I think they're going to go ahead and either take a timeout. One second remaining. Now down to zero. And they'll take a timeout. And it comes with 224 remaining in this ball game. Fourth and 11 when we come back. You're watching the UIL playoffs on Texan Live presented by Panera Bread. Clean food. Words you don't often hear. Words we at Panera live by. Because clean food is food as it should be, with no artificial flavors, preservative sweeteners, and no colors from artificial sources. We think clean food tastes better, feels better, does better. 100% of our food will be clean by year's end. Every bite will be food as it should be. Two twenty-four to go in this ball game. A timeout taken by Manville just as the play clock was about to expire. That's your first timeout against Cedar Park, only with one timeout remaining for this final two twenty-four. Fourth down and eleven for Manville as they're going to punt this one away and see what Cedar Park has left in them for the final two and a half. Hunter Volk back to. Return this one, a fair catch is going to be called by him at the 30-yard line of his own territory. So it's looking more and more like Manville having a big comeback here from Cedar Park, which I would not put it past him based on what we saw the final two minutes of the first half. But unless that happens, it would be Manville and Temple playing for the regional championship next week. Again, we'll get the whole slate of games that we'll be covering here on Texan Live throughout the week, so stay tuned to our Twitter account, Texan underscore live, and our website, texanlive.com. This pass up the middle is going to be caught and aggressively hit at the 44-yard line. Tucker with a big hit there. As clock now down to two minutes. First and ten ball at the 44-yard line. This pass is going to be caught on the far side. It's Peyton Sawicki coming away with a reception. A three-yard gain, second down and seven ball on the 47-yard line. They're going to have to hurry. 140 remaining in the game. This one almost intercepted. And probably kicking himself right now, Derek Tucker. If he had that, that would have been a pick six, and that would have just about done it. But it just stands as a very scary incomplete pass for Cedar Park. 136 to go. They're going to need a touchdown. They're going to need to recover an onside kick. Season hangs in the balance. The defending state champion, undefeated this season. Stepping into the pocket, Sexton. Going to the outside, he's going to have to throw it away. 130 remaining, it's going to be fourth down. 
This could be the final try for the Cedar Park Timberwolves. Park defeated Willis and Bryan to get here. They have enough left in them. Fourth down and seven. This for the ball game. Potentially, flags do go up here. Lots of them, about three of them. As the pass downfield is going to be incomplete. And if this is against Cedar Park, Manville might just go ahead and decline it. And that would just about do it. Well, they're going to keep this one going. It's actually offsetting penalties. An offside on the defense. So they're going to go ahead and replay this one. Let's keep the drama going, shall we? Fourth down and seven. Try it again here. Throw up the middle, and that's a little bit too short. Intended up the middle for Drew McDaniel, and that should just about do it. With only 1.18 to go in this ballgame, Manville with a 12-point lead. Cedar Park with only one timeout remaining. Manville can run this clock down. So Temple defeated Port Arthur Memorial earlier. Very handily at that, so Anvil and Temple will be playing for the regional championship next week. And we're gonna hope to get coverage for you for that game, so keep checking in on our Twitter account, Texan underscore live. And our website, TexanLive.com, for updates throughout the week. Run here. And he's going to kill some more time off the clock. A three-yard pickup there. We're now under a minute. 30 seconds on the play clock. Manville, as I mentioned before, the past two years, they've made it to the regional finals. Last time, the last couple of years, though, it has been in the Division II 6A playoff bracket, and they ran into the Kenny Tigers both times. But they put up good fights there. For no match for them last year, Katie was actually declared the national champion last year. With 26 seconds remaining, Manville takes their second timeout of the second half. As the play clock was winding down here, so one last play should just about do it here for Manville. And see some more scores around the area. Klein Collins defeated John Tyler very handily, 56 to 14. Earlier today, Sinka Ranch is on to the regional championship game. They defeated Friendswood 34 to 7. Austin Bowie was defeated by Duncanville today after holding a like a lead at one point. 32 to 27, the final over there as Duncanville moves on. Westfield shutting, or actually 44 to 6, almost shutting out Westbrook over at Stallworth Stadium, winning that one pretty handily. So they're on to the regional championship after an 0-3 start of their season. 26 seconds. This will be the final play. Cedar Park does have one timeout remaining, but they will be unable to stop. Or unable to really do anything at this point. Manville will move on for another season to the regional championship game. They have yet to make the state tournament appearance for this year be their year. They look mighty strong this season, especially going down to 5A and just dominating performance after performance. They win this one 47 to 35. We'll be back to wrap it up 
in just a moment right here on Texan Live. Download the Fox Sports Southwest Football Friday app. Connect and get live scores statewide. Find games near you. Plus, get your photos on our Friday night show. This is the one app that can handle high school football in Texas. Hit the App Store and type Football Friday. Dallas Stars Hockey is on Fox Sports Southwest. The sharp shooting stars led by Jamie Benn and Tyler Sagan hit the ice. Looking to build off last year's incredible run and take back the Western Conference. Sports Southwest and stream the games live on Fox Sports Go. Friday high school football isn't over till you watch high school scoreboard live. Final scores, big plays, plus the DQ big game of the week. Be a part of the most watched high school football show in Texas. Friday nights on Fox Sports Southwest. Clean food. Words you don't often hear. Words we at Panera live by. Because clean food is food as it should be. With no artificial flavors, preservative sweeteners, and no colors from artificial sources. We think clean food tastes better, feels better, does better. 100% of our food will be clean by year's end. Every bite will be food as it should be. Final here from Kyle Field in College Station. 47 to 35, Manville takes this game. They only scored seven points in the second half, but those 40 points that they put up in the first half, enough to win this one. They actually didn't even need to score here in the second half because Cedar Park was only able to score 35, but they put up a valiant effort here. They outscored Manville in the second half, 14 to seven, but that 40 to 21 deficit going into the next half was just too much to overcome, especially against this defense which consists of those three commits for the Manville Mavericks, Derek Tucker, the free safety. He's committed right here to Texas A&M, so he got a glimpse of what he's going to see over the next four years of his college career. Uh, Lance Bryant, he's committed to Indiana, the defensive end, and the linebacker, London Harris. He's committed to Texas States. So a lot of defense played here from Manville. They played a lot of tight coverage. Uh, unfortunately for them, they were able to, or they gave up 35 yards. Uh, tough go of it for them. Their offense doing just enough to put this one away. Three turnovers forced by the Manville Mavericks, which was the difference in this game. The first two possessions, actually, of this football game were turnovers from Cedar Park, the first two drives they had anyway. An interception and a fumble lost. Kind of made the difference there. So Manville will move on to the next round. Or they will play Temple for the regional championship. Some final stats to go over here for you. For Cedar Park, their leading rushers, uh, Tyler Levine had 10 carries. For 22 yards, Mackenzie Sexton, eight carries, 14 yards, Omar Alzer, Eight carries for 10 yards and one touchdown. And Peyton Sawicki had the one carry for four yards. No touchdowns. For Manville, their leading rusher, Sam Smith. Six carries, 32 yards. Then Eric Prince, uh, four carries, 28 yards. He and Smith each had a touchdown. Caleb Jolovin had seven carries for 27 yards. Jalen Preston, three carries for eight yards, no touchdowns for either one of them. In the passing department, the big one here, it was Mackenzie Sexton, 34-55, three interceptions though, but he did have 415 yards in the air, four touchdowns, and he was sacked two times. Kaysen Martin for the Manville Mavericks, 25-39, one interception, 394 yards uh, through the air, four touchdowns. As long as one going for 66, he was sacked just one time. The leading receivers for Cedar Park, Carson Neal, 10 Receptions, 141 yards, and the touchdown as long as one going for 45. Drew Daniels, six receptions, 107 yards in the touchdown. Peyton Sawicki, six receptions, 59 yards. Brant McDonald, three receptions, 16 yards. On the other end for the Manville Mavericks, Keelan's a big night for him, or big afternoon, I should say. Ten receptions, 112 yards. 
And the one touchdown, Jalen Preston, five receptions, 109 yards, and the touchdown, Cam Scott, three receptions for 20 yards. Caleb Jolovit, two receptions, 85 yards. Very two, or two very big receptions, by the way. And uh, all around fantastic game by both teams, but uh, Manville came out on top. Leading the way for tackles, Hunter Falk. Uh, he had 12 total. Jordan Diver had 11 total. Trent Gordon on the other side for Manville. He had 10, or excuse me, 10 tackles, and Derek Tucker had eight tackles. Jordan Diver having the one sack and two and a half tackles for losses. So those are all stats. And I hope you all have enjoyed our live streaming of today's game here on Texan Live. Again, if you'd like to know more about Texan Live, Feel free to check out the rest of our website for highlight videos, our games, upcoming events, and a whole lot more. You can like our Facebook page, Texan Live. Follow us on Twitter at Texan underscore Live. You can also follow us on Snapchat and Instagram at, at uh, Texan Live, all one word. And you can also subscribe to our YouTube channel, Texan Live, as well. That'll do it here from Kyle Field, site of Texas A&M University, where, again, your final score, the Manville Mavericks defeat Cedar Park. Timberwolves 47-35 move on to the regional finals against Temple next week. This has been a production of Texan and TexanLive.com in association with Universal Interscholastic League and Fox Sports Southwest. For my production engineer, Jesse Wolf, I am Mark M. Johnson saying so long and good night from College Station, Texas.